In the name of the one triune God whom we adore. Amen. Good morning. It is certainly wonderful to be able to share together in this time of worship uh, in your homes and at St. John United Church of Christ, Manchester. I'm Pastor Kevin, here with Pastor Stephen and Tim Osick, our Minister of Music, as well as our production assistant, Grace Gregory. It's a privilege to be able to unite together in this sacred time that we can find meaning and hope amid these times. I want to share with you a few announcements. The first is that there will be a shortened friendly call sent out this week, and it'll have another letter from leadership sharing with you about the uh, actions and the things taking place here at church. Uh, one being that we have suspended all services, meetings, programs, activities within the building until Friday, April 24th. Also want you to know that staff is working at home remotely now and want you to be aware that uh, there will probably not always be a staff person here at the church, but we are going to do everything we can to keep the ministry going and appreciate your support. And then I think the other note is that we have a number of Zoom meetings coming up for the congregation. And so I know that there will be uh, Sunday school classes for adults like today at one o'clock. Uh, also, there will be, I know this week, some Zoom meetings for fellowship on Tuesday at 11 o'clock and Thursday at 11 a.m. And please let us know if you need that information so that you can certainly get on and connect with uh, the community of faith during this time. And so those are the announcements that I have. And at this time, we will share in the hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
this time from our homes and from the church to unite us in your spirit. We pray that your presence would fill us with the good news of your gospel and that the message this day would help guide and lead us in your mission and your purpose. This we ask through Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture this reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, the illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Mary and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you're going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his disciple, his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, so some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah and the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with him, with them in their house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, 
She knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here. So they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Here ends the reading of our scriptures. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The sermon series topic this morning is loss. Last weekend, I picked up my oldest daughter, Sarah, from college. Due to a Mercyhurst University student testing positive for COVID-19, the school abruptly informed everyone to move out. My trip to Pennsylvania felt like a bad zombie apocalypse movie. In the early hours of the morning, before it was light, I packed up Sarah's belongings in the car and we hopped on the interstate. As we drove away, the what should have been swirled around my mind and weighed heavy on my heart. Sarah's a senior. The capstone project that she had been choreographing will never come to be. She won't get to perform on stage one final time for Raw Edges. There was no opportunity to say goodbye to professors. There won't be a chance to hang with her friends and raise a toast for a job well done. She won't get to walk across campus one last time to reminisce over her college days. And on Monday, she received the email that the graduation ceremony has been canceled. All that hard work and dedication for honor cords and stoles won't be recognized. She won't be able to walk across the stage in her cap and gown while hearing her name being called to receive her degree. The moment to celebrate has been laid to rest in the tomb of her soul. 
was. The coronavirus, COVID-19, has forced us to shelter in our homes for the safety and health of humanity. It's important and necessary. At the same time, this action doesn't come without loss. We are all experiencing grave loss right now. We think of the millions of high school and college seniors across the country who won't get to celebrate these final school days. But we also think about the people who have lost their jobs and their incomes because of this pandemic. We think about the sports seasons like basketball and hockey and other performances like symphonies and shows that have been lost. We think about the loss of trips, weddings, funerals that didn't happen. I know loved ones are being buried while family can only sit in their cars and watch without a service. Most especially, we think of the precious lives that are lost each day to this deadly virus spreading around the globe. The pain and loss takes the breath out of us. I imagine that Grief and sorrow also pulsed through the very being of Mary, Martha, Jesus, and the many friends in our story this morning. Their brother in faith, Lazarus, died and was buried in a cave. There would be no more family dinners. They wouldn't get to grow old together. The times shared with one another had now ended, and that loss was devastating. If we pause for a second and set aside the title of the story, The Raising of Lazarus, there are many parallels to our lives today. For instance, after Jesus hears about the illness of his friend Lazarus, he stays two days longer in the place where he was. Even Jesus shelters at home before he heads to visit Mary and Martha. That's hard for Jesus, just as it's hard for all of us to shelter in place. We want to go and do something, but the timing and moment are not appropriate. When Jesus arrives in Bethany, family and friends are upset with him. Some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? They're irritated that nothing was done to prevent the loss. Many of us are probably frustrated and angry that something, anything, can't be done to prevent the losses happening in our lives. The story also shares with us in verse 35, Jesus began to weep. Folks, this loss was so tragic for Jesus that he cried. Yes, Jesus shed tears of grief. I can't even fathom the river of tears shed by people around the world because of the tremendous amount of loss. I've cried a few times already due to the overwhelming nature of this hardship. 
It's all right to cry. Jesus did too. My mind also went to the part of our text where Martha says, Lord, there is a stench because he has been dead four days. The smell of the body stinks. How fitting for our circumstances. There's no other way to put it. Loss stinks. The other thing I noticed in our story is that after Jesus unbinds Lazarus from the tomb, there's no rejoicing. I mean, where's the scene of up, everyone jumping up and down, hooray, kind of doing a, a fist pump, hooting and hollering? There should be a big party. I ponder that in our own situation. Once the shelter in place, that whole order is lifted, and we can be together again, my sense is that we won't be parting like it's 1999. It'll take time for people to recover. Folks will be a, a little leery for a while. Life will look and feel different after loss, especially loss as significant as the coronavirus. But fear not, there is good news. And our story this morning offers us that gospel message. And it gives us life and light amid our story now. I don't mean to be cliche, however, there are three gifts that Christ Jesus grants to us and that I gleaned for our Christian faith this morning. Despite the loss, Jesus goes to Bethany to mourn with Martha, Mary, the disciples, and all those friends who grieved the death of Lazarus. He didn't avoid them. He didn't deny the pain and frustration that everyone felt. Jesus went to be with the community and to share in that hardship. That's how we can get through loss. We express our feelings and emotions with others who are experiencing the same thing. If we have friends who are also dealing with the same loss, then we need to call them and talk to them about it. We don't have to go through it alone. As the liturgy in our funeral service states, we come to comfort and to support one another in our common loss. We find a kinship and a bond with brothers and sisters who are also dealing with the same struggles. And we help each other acknowledge the loss, but more importantly, work through it together for healing and new life. Another takeaway from our biblical story is that Jesus persists in the face of loss to find good news. The family and friends of Lazarus, they had kind of thrown in the cloths. Mary says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. They had resigned themselves to the fact that this was it. This was the end. But Jesus carries on. 
He perseveres amid the loss. And so must we. We must persist in the face of the coronavirus. We must forge ahead through our loss and focus on the hopeful, positive aspects that have, that have come to us and that are going on all around us. I invite you, after worship today, to take time to name the wonderful things that we have that we can look forward to right now in this time. Maybe it's, you know, more family dinners around the table that you didn't think that you would have again. I, I walk outside and I see families going for a walk, you know, playing Frisbee together. Maybe it's slowing down the pace of life for more sleep, to catch up on the, the sleep that you've lost, or for that refreshing walk outside, or to read a good book that you've been talking about and that you just haven't done because you found all these other things to do. Maybe it's recognizing the little things that we take for granted and having a new appreciation for the sanctity of life. Let me give you an example. I miss all of us being here together in worship. This is a great loss, not being able to join as a community on Sundays. At the same time, we conducted our first ever live stream worship experience on Facebook last Sunday. Folks, that's monumental. The even bigger surprise is that we had 183 people viewing our service on Facebook. Wow. I thought if we had gotten 30 or 40 people, we'd be doing good. In the face of loss, I recognize that we can connect online for sacred time, and that we must continue this ministry for the new light that it can bring to God's people and to our church. Make sure you name and claim the positive things that come out of loss. The raising of Lazarus is really a story about the raising of us. It's a message of good news about how Christ Jesus can unbind us and help raise us to new life again. On the way to the cross this Lent, on the road to Jesus' death on Good Friday, as we continue to endure through COVID-19 and the stay-at-home order, we must remember this powerful word from our Savior. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Life in Christ is not something that will be deterred by the coronavirus, deterred by loss. For resurrection, for the gift of the gospel, for the glorious life that is life, God grants to us now. The Lord always always leads us out of the cave of loss 
and bestows upon us a new start through faith. Trust in the Lord. God can do it through common support, through positive gifts, through the new life of faith. It's possible now. is the Messiah, the Son of God. Praise be to Christ our Lord, this day and always. Amen. That song was Rise Up by Andre Day.
Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we come to you today thankful for the opportunity to gather in a different form of worship. Thankful for the fact that there is technology that will allow us to meet here with each other through the miracle of Facebook. Thankful for the changing of the seasons outside as things begin to warm up and we allow ourselves the chance to get some fresh air. But loving God, we come to you today worried, troubled at heart by what is happening in our world and in our own lives. We pray that with the changing of the season, you also will change the path of this world. We believe that you can do all things and we ask that you guide us, that you give us strength as we face this pandemic and help us to remain strong. We bring to you today so many people that we cannot even name. We lift up those who are sick and suffering from health issues, those who have lost loved ones because of this virus, and those who are suffering from depression and loneliness in this time of separation and being alone. We pray for those who are caring for the sick, the doctors and nurses and technicians and janitors and cleaning crews of all different ways and kinds and all those people who have put others before themselves. It takes a kind of selfless heart to care for those who are sick. And so God, we pray for them. We pray that you would be their source of rest, their source of replenishment when weary, and their source of hope in such overwhelming times. We also pray for the health that they may not fall ill. God, protect us all with a hedge of protection against the germs of this coronavirus, against the weariness that comes with working so hard to help others. Help those who are giving to be protected as they serve others. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter into our final song, we're going to sing, In the Bulb There is a Flower.
Thank you. 